Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me for today's episode of Crafting with Class. We are continuing with the Beginner Card Maker series. Today we're on Class 2 where we're going to talk about the Essential 8. This is what I refer to as the 8 categories of things that I feel like beginning card makers should definitely invest in first. Now in Class 1, we talked about the first three of the Essential 8. So let's go ahead and review really quick. The fundamentals we talked about in class one were getting some cardstock and maybe rainbow colors to begin with, white and black, a glue of your choice, and then scissors. These are the fundamentals and this is what you must have. So let's begin with number four. Number four are reverse tweezers. So these are a couple types of reverse tweezers. So this is a, a straight point and this one's at an angle but what is the difference between just tweezers and reverse tweezers so with regular tweezers so when it's relaxed the tips are open and you have to press to close the tips to hold down whatever you want to hold down so with reverse tweezers it is the opposite so when it's relaxed so take a look so when it's relaxed the tip is closed you have to press to open. Okay, so why would that matter? So let's say that you are trying to glue two pieces together. So let's say these are two pieces, I wanna glue them down. I have put my tape on, my glue, and then I have to hold until that glue sets. But if you have your tweezers, then what you would do is put your glue and then have your scissors hold, I mean your scissors, your uh, tweezers hold it for you. So your tweezers will be like an extra set of hands that will hold it for you until the glue sets. And then you can you know, do something else or work on something else. Um, you can't do that, obviously. You would have to sit there and hold it, which defeats the purpose. Another way that you can use the tweezers is, okay, so let's, ha let's say I have this gift that I want to tie with a bow. So I'm going to Go ahead and put that around tie my bow here and so instead of trying to like put my finger here and then try to maneuver and all of that I can just simply have my tweezers hold this for me so that it's nice and taut right and then I can use both my hands to go ahead and make the loop and the knot and then once I have it where I want it I can just slip it out see so it's like another pair of hands that makes it much easier to be able to tie a bow number five is a ruler but not just a ruler i really really think there's a uh, room for two rulers so i have here just a ruler regular ruler and this is a t-square ruler sorry for the glare so i'll show you why i think both of them are essential so here you have the tim holtz ruler i swear by this ruler i have used this ruler since you know it was introduced to the market and i've never looked back it is like the swiss army knife of rulers so here's what it does it measures just like a standard ruler um, but it is also a zero centering ruler so what does that mean so let's say i i'm not sure how you know how uh the size of this piece of paper so i can measure it right like normal but notice that it's a little bit uh of a weird measurement right it's like not quite four and a quarter and not and it's short of four and a half oh gosh i don't want to do any math to find out where the center is so then i can go ahead and place this so here's the zero centering ruler at the bottom so the regular measurements are at the top and then the zero measure zero centering measurements are at the bottom so all i need to do is place this so that both sides are equal so here sorry everyone i'm gonna have to switch to voice over because my chihuahua pit bulls were <laughs> barking like crazies let's continue so you want to put the ruler 
so that it is equal on both sides. So there's two on this side and two on the right. So two on the left, two on the right, and they both should have the same amount of space. So there you can see they are, and now I know exactly where that middle, um, the middle of the paper is. So it's so, so handy. This ruler also has a metal edge. And the benefit of having that metal edge is that you can then use a craft knife to go ahead and cut against it and not ruin your ruler because it is plastic. Awesome. This ruler also has little holes at the bottom next to the zero centering. So you can see the little holes and those are perfect for either making a hole or in exactly the place you want because you can see exactly where you're going to pierce that hole and also just for piercing holes so if you want like a faux stitch look then this is perfect and this is what i use it for definitely a lot of the times so in order to do that what you would need is to get a piercing mat this could be like a mouse pad and then all you need to do is place your paper over the mat and then your ruler on top of your paper. Because the ruler is clear, you can see exactly where you're going to be making those holes. And you can also use the markings on the ruler to make sure that your paper is straight. So all you do is just pierce with a piercing tool or if you don't have that, you can just use a needle to make those holes. So let's say I want I, you can see there those holes and then you can take a pen and then just fill in the lines in between so that it looks like it's been stitched with a machine, but it hasn't, it's been faux stitched by you. Let's go ahead and talk about the T-square ruler. So this is very handy and it does something that the other ruler just doesn't do, which is to make sure that your paper or whatever it is, is lined up because it has this crossbar. So you line it up with the edge of your paper and it will butt against your paper. So you will absolutely feel it. And then you will know that whatever it is you're going to do is going to be straight. So for example, if you want to make sure that you have a straight line across, this is the way to do it. Um, you can also do it, you know, any direction. Um, and because this ruler is 12 inches, you can use up to 12 inch paper and you'll know that it's going to be a straight line all the way across. So this is very handy. Um, if you want to, um, you can use this not only to make lines, of course, but you can use it to line up sentiments. So if you know you want to put a, a sticker somewhere, or a sentiment strip somewhere, you can use this to make sure that your sentiment strip is lined up straight. Here I have a sticker so I can just place my sticker up against the ruler and then I'll know that where I stick it, it's going to be straight. Another cool use for this is if you want to make sure you're lining up your alphabet stickers straight as well. So here I have a couple of stickers I want to put on my card. So I'm going to use that edge of the ruler to go ahead and line up the stickers and that and then before I press them down so I know that they are straight. And there is my straight high. Next is foam tape. So foam tape comes in different, um, different sizes. You can get them on a roll where like this big, huge one where you just peel off, you know, however much you need, you can roll it up or double it up, I should say. So you can, it comes in these rolls like this or you can get them in uh, smaller width sizes <clears throat> and you can also get them on a roll already cut up and then you have squares different sizes and even colors so what do you want with this they are going to give lift and dimension to your card so let me show you this card here so as you can see this card is nice but when you compare it to one that has dimension, it's like these are flying off the page, as you can see. Whereas these have no movement, they're flat, and these look like they're actually in air flying. So the foam squares really make a difference, as you can see, and really for your cards. This is a bone folder. So as you can see, there are many types of bone folders. 
So this one has a little point on the end and then it has like this flat to really press it in. So what do we use these for? Card makers use these to score on the paper. So for example, you take something like this and if you fold it yourself, right, you're gonna get little crease marks along the side and it won't look so nice. When you do this with a bone folder, then your crease is much nicer and much cleaner. And I don't know if you can really tell, but this is much crisper and cleaner than this. Finally is paper pads. So with paper pads, I would recommend you get ones that have um, so when you get a paper pad, this one I've already used, you'll get all these designs that are meant to go together, but you also get what I call cut aparts. So you can take these, cut them out, and now you have things for your cards. So this one happens to have these borders. So you have borders, you have those sentiment things, you have lots of different choices you can cut up the papers that's that paper pad and then there's this one this is doodle bug and the same thing you have all these cute little things but you will also get a chance to cut these up into borders um, you'll have little um, strips there you'll have some little things even some sentiments so this will give you embellishments it'll give you paper so this is a good way to go when you are beginning okay so i'm going to make a card using only the things that we talked about so i'm going to be using my got paper we've got glue we've got our paper trimmer we've got scissors, we've got our bone folder, tweezers, some, and we're going to be using this paper pad and some card stock to make a card and the rulers. So let's make a card. All right, so starting off, I want to make my card base. So I'm going to line up my paper to the measurement of four and a quarter. I'm going to slide my trimmer track or blade, I should say, down. You're going to get two pieces. You can make two four and a quarter by five and a half inch cards with one sheet of eight and a half by 11. But I'm going only going to make one. So now I'm going to flip my paper over and now I'm going to score, which is to take that bone folder and rub it in the groove to make a score line. So there you can see it. And what that does is help to crease the paper so you have a nice professional looking fold. So I'm going to fold the paper in half and then I'm going to take the edge of my bone folder and I'm going to rub it across that score mark that I just created. And that's going to give me that great edge and it's not going to leave any kind of marks or shine or anything. And there's my card base. So let's put that one away. Next, I want to work on the pattern paper. So I have this pattern paper pack and I have a bunch of scraps and that's what I'm going to use because that's what I've got. So why not? So I pulled out all the scraps that I had and I'm kind of looking to see what I could use or if my, I might need to pick more paper but I think I can make this work. So I'm going to take and use this side little border with all the words because that looks really cute. And then with the rest of the other paper scrap, it's going to cover my card front perfectly. So that was a nice quinky dinky. So I'm going to bring my trimmer back in. I'm going to line up the edge because I want to cut off where that little bus is at. So I just have that little word border. I'm going to line it up and remember that this trimmer has a um, guide so I know exactly where I'm going to be cutting. So there you can see I have my little side. Now I'm going to go ahead and look 
at my card base and make sure that that's going to fit the way that I think it is. So I'm going to go ahead and put um, the pieces. I think I want to put this one on the left and this one on the right. And I see that it's just enough room. And then I can add a layer underneath these two pieces to mat it. So that will give it more detail or a nice detail edge. Now I'm trying to figure out what part of this I want to cut off. And I definitely want to cut off that test. <laughs> Nobody wants to see test on a guard for school. So I'm going to go ahead and trim off that little bottom part because it's too long for my the length of my card anyway. So I'm going to take my ruler and I just want to see how much of it I, I want to measure to see that it's going to, in fact, work with my card base. And it is. So if I cut right underneath school, then it's going to work just fine. Now I've put both of the papers in my trimmer and I'm cutting off right underneath that uh, word school and they lined up perfectly because I cut them together at the same time. Now I'm bringing in a piece of black cardstock that I'm going to use as a matting layer underneath these two. So just to make it simple on myself, I'm just going to go ahead and add some glue to that pattern paper and I'm going to line it up on near the edge of the black cardstock. So I want to just make sure that I have the same amount of space from the top and from the bottom. And so I'm going to line it up. Then I'm going to take the other part and I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to add some glue around the edges and notice that I don't add a lot. It just a little goes a long way. So I'm going to place it next to the other piece, making sure that it's again lined up. And then all I'm going to do is go ahead and trim around the rest of the black cardstock just to leave a little border that matches the other side. So I'm putting it into my trimmer and I'm looking through the guide to make sure that it's the same amount of space. And so you can see there and then I'm going to flip it over and or turn it, I should say, and then do the same thing. So I look through that metal guide and then go ahead and cut off that excess and then I have a mat. Okay, so now I can take that matted piece and add it to my white card base. Now I'm going to go ahead and take this panel that has all those different cut aparts. I'm going to choose the one I want to use and I'm going to go ahead and just cut it out with my scissors. But you can, of course, use your paper trimmer, which would be very easy since these are straight lines. And I'm just going to go ahead and carefully cut out this panel that I'm going to use. And I want to cut it out carefully just because I may want to use the other ones in other cards. So. This is easy to do with your scissors just because they're straight lines and you can just cut um, them easily that way. Next, I'm going to go ahead and put it on the front of my card just like that. So I'm going to flip it over and add some of that foam tape. So this happens to be from the Dollar Tree. So you don't think that materials for paper crafting have to be expensive. In a future video, I'm going to tell you all the ways that I save money on paper crafting. All right, so I'm going to peel the liner so that it exposes the adhesive that is on the back. And then I'm going to go ahead and place it. Now, I could have used my tweezers here, but I forgot. So then, but this is a bigger piece, so it wasn't really necessary. So now that I have it where I want it, I can use my ruler also to make sure that it's straight, which I will do in a moment. All right, so I'm going to take my glue and add some to the back. So again, it doesn't have to be a lot. And then I can just attach it to my card base, making sure that I, li I line it up on all four of the sides. All right, so there it is. Now I want to decorate the inside of the card because that's something I do and I can do that very easily with this leftover border. So I think it'd be really cute just to have this little bus going across the bottom of the card. So I'm going to bring in my trimmer again or I can cut it with my scissors but the trimmer is really easy. And then I can line it up 
and then cut off that little extra piece and there is my little bus border and then I can add it to decorate the inside of my card just so that it's not too plain. So that would be very easy. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and add some glue to the back of the paper, just like so. And then I can go ahead and attach it to the bottom of my, car of my card base. Okay, so once I have it where I want it, then all I have to do is turn it over and then cut off any of that excess. All right, and that is it. Now, just to make sure everything's straight, I'm gonna bring in my T-square ruler before I press anything down to permanence. I can see that that is straight on that. And I can even check the inside little border as well. And of course, you should do this before you glue it down. <laughs> that would be the smart thing to do. But here is the card using only the essential eight. So this is a very cute card and you don't need a whole lot of things. If you happen to find 12 by 12 paper, that still works because oftentimes they will have cutter parts that will you can use in your cards and you can you can use all the layers and you also have lots of choices in here see you can have some borders that you can use as well um and in the case of like big prints you can definitely cut those out and use them as embellishments so you have embellishments you have borders you have look, you can even cut some of those out beautiful papers that you can use and lots of choices and even some cut aparts now let's get into an honorable mention for beginning card makers i think it's a good idea to pick up a pack of pre-made card bases and envelopes so they come in different sizes like a2 or a7 and usually they're not too expensive um, so here you can see that it comes with a pre-made card base these happen to be from hobby lobby and these feel pretty good like 85 pounds so not too bad and then it comes with the matching envelope so that way you don't have to think about oh where am i going to find an envelope to fit this card so that's probably a good way to start. So I de definitely think you can add a pack of these to start. Now, I know what you're thinking. You have all the crafty things. Now what? Well, the most important thing, advice. That is the topic for class three. I'll be sharing all the things that I wish I knew when I started and what I've learned along the way. And if class two was helpful, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and I will see you again in class three. Until next time, bye.